Hello everyone, Stakuya here, and welcome back to the world of Millennium Dawn Hoi 4, the modern day mod where all of our dreams come true and they also come to die. Today's episode, my friends, though, is going to be a little bit special because this actually comes at a specific quest from someone that I met while it was that I was in Denmark. I'm going to post a picture of it here right now, but uh, I had this little meetup with a group of people at a bar in Copenhagen, and it was a ton of fun. I love every single time that I get to travel and go to places. I love meeting up with people there. It's always a ton of fun to be able to meet all of you. But usually, while these meetings are typically for the people who who are of drinking age or older, as we usually like to host them in bars and things like that. While I was there having fun with everyone, there was a boy who had just finished with school who showed up with his mother to come in and say hi. And that was, that was really awesome. I don't remember if you ever actually gave me your name or not. If you did, then I apologize. But when you came in, you specifically requested that I go and do Denmark Millennium Dawn. And you know what? For going out of your way and showing up in the first place and saying hi, that's exactly what I'm going to do here today. So thank you, young Danish boy who I do not actually remember if you gave me your name. This one's for you. So that's right, my friends. Today we are going to be playing as Denmark, the smallest of all the Scandinavian countries. Denmark itself has an absolutely fascinating history and a very complex one, as if you go and look at it back during the medieval period, it had a very um, complex relationship, to say the least, with its uh, Scandinavian brothers. And like all good brotherly relations, they, uh, they fought a lot. And so it was that the once great power of the North Sea has now been relegated to just a couple little islands and also the northern part of Europe here with Jutland. But we my friends today are going to change that. We are going to return Denmark to its rightful place in history, its true position of glory. And I know that I'm going to lose every single Norwegian and Swede that is watching this right now. Unsubscribed immediately. But that all being said, you all are very aware that not every country is created equal, whether that is in real life or specifically in a game like Hearts of Iron, there are certain nations that are going to have significantly stronger power bases and a much easier time to form anything, conquer anything, to really do anything at all. You wouldn't think that Denmark should be capable of much, but oh my god, is Denmark so incredibly broken in this. Do you want to see the Danes terrorize Europe like it's the 9th century AD? Well, join me, my friends, because we're going to be jumping in. Hey, everyone, I am interrupting the video right now to let you know that this video is sponsored by me, because I didn't have an advertisement to actually go up on this one. But either way, one of the things that I really enjoy doing is I love meeting up with people and going on fun adventures together. And to that end, what it is that we do is we typically try to host around two to three travel trips a year. And there are a couple of those that are coming up with one of them that is happening this July where we are going to be going to Peru and the other big one that just got announced is our trip to Germany. Or I say that we're going to like Germany and Austria to the Christmas markets. We're going to be palaces. We're going to be going to all these kinds of things. Now I say Germany, but it is Germany and Austria with two of the cities that we're going to out of the three actually being in Austria, which has been a point that a bunch of people have been making fun of here when I talk about this in the first place. Guys, we're going to be going to the Nymphenburg Palace. We're going to be going and walking around Munich and Tate tasting wines, we're going to be exploring Salzburg and its Christmas markets, we're going to be seeing fortresses, we're going to be seeing all kinds of things when we go. If you want to join us, then you're only required to actually put 25% down initially up front, and then past that point, they have 6, 12, and 18 month payment options. Which makes it a lot easier, but I still understand that there's going to be a lot of people who are not actually able to join us, they won't be able to afford that. Truthfully, if I wasn't hosting these things in the first place, then I wouldn't be able to just do these kinds of things. But I still try to do as many meetups as I can with local people, and one of the things that I'm doing is I'm getting more involved in LARPs. So if you want to join one of the events that I will be participating in, like in the case of the Reckoning, then by all means, go ahead and join us. I'm going to leave links down in the description below. Thank you, my friends. And I can't wait to go on many more adventures with all of you. First things first, we're not actually going to be starting the year 2000 this time. We are actually going to start in the 2017, which was the last time that they did the current day. They stopped updating this entirely. But we are going to move 17 years into the future and not start in the year 2000, because honestly, I've done the year 2000 so many different times. And you usually, nothing really happens until going into 2008, 9, or 10. It takes years for anything to develop, and we want things to get a little bit spicier. Also, when playing in Europe, there is one great bonus to actually starting at a later time date. If we go and check our focus tree, you will see that every single member of the European Union has the focus of the European Union. When you start at the later time date, a lot more of these are actually completed than when you look at the base start in the year 2000. Meaning if you want to possibly do something like take over the entirety of the EU, well, might be a bit better to start off later. But but no one expects Denmark to be capable of doing something like that. After all, why would all the economic superpowers of Europe team up and follow Denmark? That doesn't make any sense. Well, we're going to make it happen then. First things first, from the very beginning of the game, Denmark starts out in a weak position here. It only has four military units, which we're not actually going to get rid of. Or, you know, I think we actually could. Yeah, we could go ahead and get rid of these because there's no point in paying for a military at all. And we want as much money as we can possibly get. So that is deleted. Not needed. Navy in... 
uh, we could get rid of it. Yeah. Denmark, naval power. Pfft, no, not needed. No military, no nothing. We are the peaceful Danes. In fact, we are so peaceful that when you go and check our research slot here, we, um, we're still using basic guns from like the 1950s and 60s with bayonets. We don't have any development into military tech for some reason, and I don't know why that is the case, but it's not needed. Instead, no, we need to focus on entirely pure economic matters, which luckily the Danes are very intelligent. And as a result, they are quite ahead in almost all technology. We just need a little bit of developments over here to help us with AI robotics and also increase our industrial capabilities and things will improve for us, especially when we go over here then and actually help ourselves do the whole power situation. Integrated gasification so that we can actually reduce our fuel consumption and also at the same time we are going to need the ability to produce more fuel. But the less use the better it is. Advanced control. Yes, very nice. We have a whopping 94% bonus to research from the very beginning as well as some pretty good bonuses to construction. Like we start out in a very strong position with the exception that we don't have any actual industry. But that is because Denmark is one of those states that is a social welfare state. The labor unions are quite strong in it, but simultaneously we do have some landed owners and also some industrial conglomerates that provide a lot of uh, monetary benefits to us, to say the least. We have the highest level of welfare that you can possibly imagine, extensive, which is a huge tax burden, but simultaneously it does give us a lot of political power, monthly population growth, and more stability, which is a good thing because simultaneously, in order to pay for that, our taxes are incredibly high. I mean, a whopping 44% population tax. That is stupid. And that is the thing that is currently hurting our stability. It's fine though. We don't really need to worry about that for a long amount of time. In addition to that, we have the second highest level of healthcare, the highest level of education, and very tiny amounts of policing and military. We don't really need any of this stuff. Not yet, at least. But what I'm going to need to do first here in this scenario is that I'm going to go and first build up all of my infrastructure, which is the necessary thing that we have to do with our very few civilian factories. And after that, we're going to try and get some civilian factories going here as well. Those are going to take basically forever to build and it's not going to help us. Second thing that we're going to do is military factory wise, we are going to want to produce that basic equipment that isn't actually really helpful for us, but it doesn't matter. Make sure that we're producing some convoys, which is always a good thing to have. And focus wise, what are we doing? Well, in order for the master plan to succeed, we're going to need to generate as much political power as possible while simultaneously producing as much money as possible. Nothing else in the scenario really matters. Thus, although we could go and do stuff down the political side, we do not need that at all. What we instead need is the governance of Denmark. Denmark, though small, is a country with a fair amount of issues of all kinds. The country has colonies, small bouts of corruption, energy questions and how to create a sustainable economic growth model. It is time to prepare to govern our burgeoning country to improve everything that we can, which we are going to do. At the same time, because we actually start out with a liberal outlook, this means that we get specific bonuses. Namely, our investments actually get 8% growth instead of 6% growth like as a return. So when you look at the fact that we already are positive in income, that we have barely any debt and that debt barely cost us anything, we will actually make more money by investing than we would from trying to pay down our debt. So that is precisely what we're going to do. We're going to go over here to Norway and hey buddy, I'm going to improve your country. With the best thing that we can do here being civilian industry, at least right now. The reason being is that eventually we plan on taking over Norway, Sweden, and Finland. As a result, anything that you invest into these countries, that means that you are going to be able to get that back once you actually take them over. So it's kind of a win-win no matter what you do. So Norway, civilian economy, invest in that, invest in that, and we still have, I think, room for one more over here. Up in the north, invest invest in that. Can I do another one? I can. I can invest all of my money. Beautiful. That's going to give Norway a whopping four civilian factories off the get-go, which is huge, and it drastically increased my amount of investment, which means, again, I'm making $0.3 billion a month in investment right now, or per week, and I'm only losing 0 0.069. That's actually actually really good for me. Anyway, my friends, let's go ahead and get this going. Also, let's see. Expected laws, we actually are not spending as much as we want to. Police spending, I don't really care about. I don't know why we're requiring higher amounts, but administrative spending, that is actually something that's going to be helpful for us. We want to generate as much political power as possible, so going up a bit may hurt our construction a little bit, but it's barely any cost to us, and it will increase the amount of political power that we're gaining. We want as much of that as we possibly can get, so it's a good idea to get from the very beginning. Also, at the same time, one of the options that we have here, there is a ludicrous amounts of events and decisions that you get by being in Europe. Just in general, it's massive. You get ones for your individual country, for energy. Uh, Denmark has its own special Danish defense forces thing, which is actually pretty 
cool, even though I went and deleted the military. But we don't really care about any of this stuff here with the EU. We're going to skip all that past immediately because we don't really want that. Let's see, where is it? Joining the EU. Yes, we are going to join the euro. For those of you who don't know, Denmark actually, even though it's part of the EU, it doesn't actually utilize the euro. It has its own currency, the Danish krone. We want to join with the euro because in doing this, it's going to reduce the amount of taxes that we have to deal with. It's going to decrease the cost of that by 1%, which is tiny, but you know, that's actually pretty nice. Plus, it reduces our interest rate, which means that the debt that we do have isn't going to be a problem at all. So yes, we're going to go ahead and join the euro. Unless already from the very beginning, I mean, that brought us back by almost the doubling the amount of income that we're making per week. Yep, no, it outright just did. There we go. All right, governance of Denmark is done. Next step after that, we are going to want to beeline down the somewhat economic slash political path. The problem that Denmark runs into right here in the beginning is that it still has a couple negative effects. For whatever reason, it's the last bastion of corruption, but we don't we don't have any corruption, apparently. I don't, I don't know why this is here. But we are in some serious need of banking reform, which is a major problem. So what we're going to go ahead and do, we can immediately get that fixed by launching ourselves a banking reform. That'll help our construction. It'll help remove a whole bunch of the tax issues that we're having here at the offices and just in general really help us with the labor unions oh also i forgot we actually start with a surplus of energy so other thing that i should have done here and i probably should have done that a previous month is that i can actually go up here in energy not all the way currently but i can do some additional consumption which will increase the amount of taxes that i'm going to get and help with my construction so that's pretty nice the more money that we get the better and there we go with banking reform complete and also syria and everything in the middle east falling apart we don't care about that instead Instead, we are going to focus on our industrial base. It's time to invest in our industrial base. We must do so, else we will be stagnant. Exactly. This will help us with foreign investment for at least the next two years, get some fast growth going, and help us with our overall production. We need that as much as possible and to boost up our economy because every single time we have enough money in for not doing some kind of other little investment that's going to happen like down in here, we will then turn around and be able to invest that in further production. Which actually, on that note, instead of moving down and doing these first, I should do urban development development fund and then develop Colbaven and develop Arhus because both of these will give me an office sector and simultaneously a fossil fuel power plant which is huge that's great to have built up right from the beginning banning hate speech Denmark has decided to ban one Christian and multiple Muslim foreign preachers as the government believes they are preaching hate speech okay anti-blasphemy law the Danish parliament has decided to repeal an ancient blasphemy law which forbids public insults of one's religion belief or worship well interesting also I don't have enough administrative spending again still well we do need more political power so all right yeah sure I'll, I'll, I'll take that just a little bit more money but i need the political power so i will definitely take that investment offer from germany yes every single time we get an investment offer we will definitely take it anything that we can do to help with boosting up our own industry and ability we will always always take it because we need as much of that as possible also for now i'm gonna need to buy a little bit of oil it seems well might as well buy that here from where's my buddy there you are norway help you out thank you thank you for providing me with this stuff with the industrial base of denmark done that means next step urban development fund because most of our population lives in large cities with more than 20 percent of the entire population of denmark living in copenhagen alone naturally improving the cities have to be our top priority because literally everyone lives right here this is where i was actually the next thing that we're also going to do here since we're currently suffering from migrant crisis among other things is that we i don't really want to have to deal with this here asylum shopping do i have to deal with any of that do i want to adopt the eu mm, no I don't need to do that here, so I'm not going to bother with it. We don't need to adopt the EU's laws. And then with the energy plants, now I can go and do some heavy additional consumption, which will increase my taxes further, more more political power, more construction, more everything. We are beelining down all this. And I don't even need to worry about doing anything with the EU because the fiscal union thing just happened because everyone is starting to actually push and research all this. Yep, Germany seems to be really trying to push the EU. Let's see, with those two done, we don't need to do these, which is only going to build up a military industry, and I, I, don't, I don't need a military industry. No, instead, we're we're going to go down and try and get is all of our varying resources so some tungsten some aluminum some more steel the things that we actually are going to need wait whoa 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 did that just say that the united states declared war on brazil why hold up hold up hold up hold up hold up fiscal union sure vote i don't care what did you do to puppet Bra wait did they default they defaulted on their debt oh yep they've defaulted on their debt i'm sure while going full nationalist okay well this is um mr obama how could you labor unions demand pay increases uh well we can either decide business unions or neither 
Uh, no, no, no. We're going to side with one of these. And in this case, we're probably going to go with the unions because we don't really have much of an industrial base from the beginning. And simultaneously, the more that the unions actually like us, the less that it costs for health care and social spending. And considering that that is easily our biggest budget problem, we really want to increase the strength and alliance with the unions. Yep, see, that right there just boosted our budget even further. Wait, well, growing unrest is affecting military production. Oh, no, 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 no. Why? Why would you do these things? Uh, they'll return to work soon enough. It's fine. All right, we'll do that. And then, oh God, why do I need more police spending? What is going on with this? What, why do you want an extensive police force? What the hell? Okay, fine. I guess I'll, I'll take the stability from this then here. I don't know why I would even want that. And defense spending is expected to be a little bit more. Sure, it's not like I have much of a cost in this in the first place. So fine, we'll just, we'll meet all expectations so that people stop radicalizing. God, Denmark, a police state. Who would have ever guessed? Stock market boom. Hey, okay, I will take that. Let's see, economic boom, great. Yeah, no, I don't need to in in inject more. Just great, yes. Really, boost me up here. This is exactly what I need right now. All right, let's see. With the completion of that, that's going to give me more resources. I need to take out a couple more loans here, so I stabilize myself at least a little bit. And then afterwards, then since our money is going down, we're going to need a hardline focus on trying to boost ourselves up here. Danish pharmaceuticals. Investing in our pharmaceutical companies will continue to see our growth expand and explode. Yes, it will, especially if we develop Ozempic, which, for anyone who doesn't know, that is a Danish product that is quite literally saving the entire economy of Denmark. It's insane. It has become the most profitable, uh, like, company in all all of Denmark. Actually, one of the most profitable in the world. Fiscal union. Uh, okay, here at this point, this is where we're going to need to start dismissing this. We, we do not want this to actually happen because if we do, th then things could unify under someone else. We're going to need to start resisting the things for the EU here once it gets a little bit too far, I think. Next up on here, once we have our investments, we're going to need to focus on flex security. We strengthen our ties with the laborers and increase welfare in our country. We can secure both by intensifying flex security. In doing so, that's going to give us even more political power even though it's going to cost us a bit of money social spending wise, but that is the thing that we really need. And we really need the labor unions to like us. The more political power gain that we can get, the better it's going to be for us. Oh, and with that, we have actually maxed out our political power here at 2000. Okay, well, once it is that we have done that, that means over here in Norway, the entity that we've been investing in here the entire time, I really hope none of you end up flipping to something else as that would be really, really bad for me. In my case, Norway, we're just going to need to go ahead and start spamming this in here until we can get up to a high enough amount. Oh, look at that. 80% turned into a puppet. Don't mind if I do. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, look. Empowering women. It's what we do here. Now, there goes the uh, Ukraine war over here, declaring war on Kharkiv and others. Let's see. Is, uh, is Russia going to join in on that? No, I don't think so. No, they just immediately won the war. And did they, did you, did you puppet? No, they just took over one of the spots. What? Interesting. Next up on this, investing into Sweden. The more that we can focus here on building each one of these states up, the better it's going to be for us. And we are going to keep them as puppets. All right, next up that we have on here, focusing on oil so we can actually get rid of our dependence upon other nations. And actually, that's going to be something great that if people buy from us, will be even better for us. All right, with that done and our oil surging, that means the next step up here after us for energy exports, because our country is rich in energy resources, which would increase our annual budget and allow us to do even more developments. Wait, election campaign heating up. Oh, right, 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 right. I have this here. Hold up. Oh, Lord, the nationalists are on the rise. No, we don't want that quite yet. We want Vince Stray to actually have the most powerful power here, which is actually quite weak in this. Hold on, what are they? Conservative Liberal Agrarian Party. The party is quoted as stating that immigrants should learn Danish and understand and respect Danish culture and traditions. Well, I mean, that's kind of what they're doing here, right? We can just boost this just a little bit, just a little bit for a little bit of support. And Lars Lok Romansen's coalition reelected. Yes, but we're still going to make changes in forming the new government. The reason being is that we don't want at this point to have the nationalists in here. Not yet, not yet for anything. Things may change, we'll see. Instead, all we need is the Social Democrats, right? No, no, wait, no, I can't. Ha, huh, ha, huh, that's... That's actually a little bit of a problem here for me. So, okay, dang it. I do actually have to invite the nationalists here again. All right, well, we're we're going to do that. <sighs> Thanks. That was a bunch of wasted political power then. All right, beautiful. It's not like I really don't need that or anything. Yeah. Oh, hey, look, I can also invest in wind farms. How nice. Vestas Wind Systems are the world's leading producer of windmills, and their large windmill parks are the pride and joy of our renewable energy initiatives. Putting up a few more will ensure clean energy to our citizens, as well as a lot of great PR to the rest of the world. Awesome. I don't really care about that, though. What I care about is the tax benefits that come with it. And that, that is Awesome, and this, oh my god, I can get even less tax cost issues. Okay, yeah, yeah, that would be, that would be really nice for me here, actually.
actually. Uh, <laughs> hmm. But also, it's increasing not alive, which I don't necessarily want. This at least helps me with my political power issue. So you know what? I think uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Centralize the government empowerment. Yes. Uh oh. I'm realizing the Finland is going nationalist. Uh, if that happens before the next election, I could be screwed. Okay, hold up. Rather than Sweden, we're gonna need to vote on Finland first. Finland, you need to calm the hell down, buddy. The Soviets are not after your life. You need to chill. Chill there, buddy. The only one after you is me. And I promise I won't use you as a meat shield like the uh, like the Swedes did. The next step after this, uh, let's see here. The status of the AMTs. With the AMTs, the old system of administration that our government has clung to for ancient times, it's important to decide what we will do for the future and whether we will empower our regions or a municipality. What does this offer? On one side, we centralize our investments and everything else that we're doing here, which is going to give me more political power, but it's... Or, no, wait, no. It's going to centralize my control over things. It's going to increase the cost of everything. Hmm. Or we decentralize it all and allow for greater growth. Oh, interesting. Actually, that seems like that has way more benefit here. Yeah, and it increases my tax revenue multiplier. Okay, yeah, you know, we're gonna strengthen all the locals here first. Who needs centralized healthcare? <laughs> no. The labor unions are demanding we up our healthcare budget. Oh, God. Uh, well, technically, it would help me with the tax cost. Yes. Fine. Fine. We're upping to max healthcare. All right. We, we really are becoming one of those welfare states. Actually, that didn't increase the cost by all that much. That was only like 0.1, which in turn provides me some really good population benefits, actually. You know what? I'll take it. We now have max education, max healthcare, and also max welfare, which is only possible because we completely deleted our entire military. I feel like someone could make a political argument about these kinds of things here. Wait, did that say that Jeremy Corbyn won? Oh my god, he did. The Labor Party's back in charge. Wait, Imperial Industry. What is this? Oh my god, we are so close. We are so close. Please. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more, Finland. Okay. Okay. That is one done. And then immediately, pop it. Yes. Completely override everything. Ah, <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you, Finland. That was, that was actually pretty close. That was pretty close. We're just, just fixing things along the side here, you know? No need to worry about any of this stuff. Wait, I'm just realizing this here now. Hold on. Worker fulfillment is the value that represents how many workers your country has working compared to what is required by our buildings. And I, you can't even see it on this. Hold on. I need to move myself around. Uh, so th this is a little bit of a problem for for me in the sense that I don't have enough people, apparently, I'm, if I'm reading this correctly, to actually work in the offices that I have. I need more population because I currently have a 0% unemployment rate. <laughs> oh, crap. I never thought I would say this, but uh, we need more unemployed people. Come on. All right, after reforming public transportation, next step, you municipal growth because we need to have the regions grow, which in turn is going to increase our productivity factor even more, more political power, more everything. This is actually huge as if you go and check out your economic review, what happens with your productivity is that productivity growth specifically is what influences factory output, construction, tax, everything. The more productive your population is, the better. Or no, no, what am I saying? It, it's better. It, it just outright is better. If your productivity is higher than 100 or 1,000, you will see larger bonuses boosting your economic growth and the output of all your buildings. Productivity grows or falls each month passively. Yes, and we are currently growing at a rate of almost seven. That is huge because the global average productivity level is 700 and we are 1,500. Supreme Danish economy strikes again. Oh, what the hell? Georgia declared war on Russia. Georgia, Georgia, buddy. Buddy, why, why, why would you do this? <laughs> Literally, why would you do this? What is this gonna resolve? What, what is it? What is this gonna do? Why, why would you? Wait, no. It said that you declared war, didn't you? Did the war immediately end? I don't get what just happened. No, it says that they're set on nuclear. Lo what are they at war with? Also, wait, why does the United States keep on trying to invest military industries into me? I mean, I kind of accepted it. I, I, I did accept one, but I don't, I don't need more military stuff. I mean, I, I will actually take it because that just means, you know, basically free military industry for me. But okay. Wait, let's say Poland is triggered. Article 50. Okay, so Poland was leaving the EU. I think I saw something about the UK leaving the EU. The Czech Republic was leaving the EU. Everyone's abandoning the EU, and here I am just trying to fix everything. The big thing is I need I need more people. I need more people. I'm realizing this. This is actually a bit of a problem for me because I just, I'm getting even less population. As I build more things, I'm running out of more things for people. So here, here's, here's what I'm gonna do. All right. Volunteer service for women? That reduces my monthly population. So no, no, no. Women banned from the military. Yes. <laughs> my wife just went to think. <laughs> Partial draft? No, we're gonna reduce that now to volunteer service. That way we uh, we can send more people back in here to work. So that's great. Reduce the size of our military and that should actually go and help us here, I think. The Suez is blocked. Okay, well, that happens. Uh, yeah, yeah. What, what's going on here with you, UK? How are you even doing here economically? You have a really small economy overall on this. Hmm. Especially when we go and compare it to something like Germany or France. France is twice the size of like the UK in terms of economics. What the hell have you been doing over here? The status of Erotom. Erotom is a small archipelago off the
the coast of Bornholm and it currently sits out of purview of any region or municipality since so inhabitants do not pay municipal taxes or really anything to the Danish government. It's time we decide what to do with this. Well, that's just silly. Member states vote on Turkey for, for what? To join the EU? Sure, 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 Turkey, you can join. Maybe give me give some cheap labor. I, I, I would appreciate that. Now, there goes uh, Sedan going ahead and declaring war on itself and tearing itself apart. That's fun. And by fun, oh my God, this is, this is a massive mess. You know, I think I'm finally at the point political power wise. I should be able to take over Sweden, I think. I might be able to do that here. Yeah, let's, let's see, let's see. Sweden, hey, hey there, buddy. I don't have much influence in you, but I could invest a little bit more perhaps maybe yeah we're just gonna go ahead and do that bump up our investments a little bit and then simultaneously after that once we have our uh, our status here rise spam this in here do i have enough come on come on please please give it to me oh my god we're right there we had just enough sweden become my puppet they oh my god what is with your teeth why do you look like a frog and with that my friends denmark is effectively united scandinavia though the reason why we did this the whole reason why i'm showing this in the first place and how powerful denmark actually is is that since you have this opportunity from the very beginning denmark gets its own special decisions where if i scroll all the way down here here it is i can unite the nordic people the nordic people have shared many a nation before the swedish empire the Kalmar union and others unifying this group of peoples with such vibrant and rich histories unique cultures and languages will pose a challenge for any who dare to complete this feat but with that we can begin to form scandinavia which you can do either by taking it over physically or by puppeting them and because we spent all this time puppeting them and building up their economies that means we didn't have to actually develop a military so yes we can just do this and immediately after this now we can start gradually trying to integrate all the varying states which we can only do so respectively once we have uh, 500 political power which is why we have been trying to save up as much as we possibly can the most populous of all these states is sweden and the big thing that we're killing for right now is population so that's that's probably the one that we're going to go and try and integrate here first which means we should invest still in finland and others as we can with that the board home special region is done i can now focus on doing something else let's see let's see what can we do i suppose it's time for the greatest challenge it's time to lay out our political project going forward let's ignore current party lines for a time and really ask ourselves the question what is the greatest challenge facing our small country today well we're, we're out of people which means amazingly enough despite the, the anger of the nationalists we are probably going to need to go down here and embrace multiculturalism and welcome refugees <laughs> listen i really need people okay we, we need more workers for the factories oh wait i'm actually i i'm running behind on my consumption oh shoot that is actually a problem okay here hold on hold on fossil fuel power plants i got a ton of those here right so let's build a couple of those in jeland yeah we're gonna need that in the meantime oh wait i realize i actually have enough political power okay let's start integrating sweden then once this is done after 365 days we will get cores on all of sweden here which is awesome now that the greatest challenge is done next up after that the welfare state yes get us some political power and more base stability and the greatest challenge facing us today involves a unique nordic welfare model whether for good or bad we cannot deny that all encompassing influence of the welfare state and any challenges to the way of our life start here specifically we're gonna need to plan on going down more welfare or to shrink it which this will help me with my industry which is nice but expanding it also gives me more political power which is pretty good let's see fund the dpr public service investment force environmental wait that doesn't help me with population though no public transportation over here seems to work better wait replace danish confederation of trade unions with international bankers oh oh oh, oh, oh no labor unions wait Wait, 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 wait. We get rid of that. that. That means that all my healthcare costs are going to skyrocket, aren't they? No, nope, what we're going to have to do is we're, we're probably going to have to expand it at this point. <laughs> this is like the exact opposite of however I played this game. And with more political power in here done, let's see, hold on. Labor unions demand pay increases. Oh God. Okay. Well, we're just going to have to side with the unions again. And then also at the same time, try to integrate Norway. Also, now I can actually do, fill why did this drop to th only costing 300? Either way, I, I, I won't mind. That'll allow me to do this a lot faster then. In the meantime, I save up as much money as I possibly can, because I'm probably going to need that here soon. So yeah, time to expand the welfare state. It's the cornerstone of our society and I need people to be supported so they can make babies and then throw the babies into the factory. Don't question it. Oh boy, the UK is set to lead the EU. All right, well that's... Dad, that's a thing then. At the same time that all this is happening, let's go ahead and start investing into other things like the UK. Hey, I'm sure that you uh, leaving the EU, you're probably gonna want some stuff here, right? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Lower demand for Danish goods abroad. No, 
No, please, please do not hurt me. Do not hurt me like this. I beg you. I beg you. Establish the FH. Historically, the Social Democrat have always had very close ties to the unions. Now the establishment of FH, the F uh, F I'm not even going to try to say that because I have a feeling I'm going to say something way worse here. The unions are even more united and strong. Well, that will increase my stability and also my factory output by quite a bit, so I will accept it. Next up on here, embrace multiculturalism. Perfect. Let's go ahead and get that so I can get more factory space. And then after that, well, we're going to need to get the whole population issue here fixed. Don't worry, guys. The Danes are now researching nukes. Nobody panic. Kenya declared war on South Sudan. Oh, the war in Africa is expanding then. Okay. Good luck to you there, buddy. Iraq captures Kirik. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. What is Iraq doing over here? Oh, yeah, it's Kurdistan and the, the, the Islamic State there too. Okay, that, that's a big mess over there. I am now building up so much political power that I literally do not know what to do with all this. Okay, well, hold up. Give me a moment. Give me a moment to actually take care of this. Uh, UK, we're just gonna jump a little bit of this into you. Pay no mind. Don't worry about it, guys. Don't worry about it. We're just gonna continuously do this and build it up. Oh, hey, look. Hey, UK. Oh, look nice. Jay Corbin. Hi. Hi. Yoink. Tim Farron. Okay. <laughs> Denmark now puppet in the UK. We also now just integrated Sweden, which means immediately after that Norway and whatnot should follow here shortly yep 46 and 57 days respectively and as for what that did for my economy well it actually did not increase it if anything it kind of slightly shrunk here I think ah interesting well suppose that's what happens when we run into a bunch of issues but hey at least with Sweden that means that we now actually fulfill way more of our uh worker requirements beautiful they had population let's say Algeria declared war on Niger what is going on down here in Africa there goes Norway then beautiful that one is done retirement reform Form is done. We're taking over even more. Next, to fund the DR by getting even more taxes, more construction speed, more everything. Beautiful. And, my friends, there goes Finland. Okay, you know what this means? You know what this means? We get the option of doing? I've united the Nordic people, which means I can update my nation flag and name. Beautiful, we are now Scandinavia. But do you see this thing here immediately below it? Um, there's a reason why we were focusing on investing into the UK. The North Sea Empire was a political union of England, Denmark, and Norway states during the early 11th century. The empire was near the end of the Viking era, and it was incredibly short-lived. Unifying the empire was once more would be an accomplishment in the modern day and could signify the return of the neo-viking era hey hey yeah <laughs> ah. yoink yeah that's gonna take 500 days but uh we're gonna just go ahead and integrate the uk then what britain demands special treatment are you serious you're my puppet buddy would you kindly stop it and then taking over everything that uh that made us a major power we are a major power <laughs> it is denmark in like five years that's all it took. And with that, we can enforce environmental policies. Also, for whatever reason, making taxes less. I don't know why, but it's going to help us more, you know? We just really love doing this. And with that, we basically completed everything on the side, except, wait, no, I haven't. I have to actually go and uh, fix my colonies, since I apparently have all those. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot. We kind of kind of have Greenland and everything over here. Hmm, release the holdings or rain in the colonies. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, we are, uh, we're not going to allow them to escape. Okay, yeah, sometimes, yeah, that's, uh, the spicy stuff is happening down here. Okay, well, that's a real event, and it's kind of weird timing that this is almost exactly when this would happen. Hmm. Oh, and immediately it was a... Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. They destroyed him us and liberated palestine what wait a minute <laughs> they did that in like three days <laughs> what <laughs> and they're, then they're rich i also love that by taking over all this territory i technically for whatever reason i think this may be just an oversight in the mod uh i, I don't get cores on the state that was owned by norway up here jan mayen which which starts with 10 people there's 10 people that live on this island and they are not happy about being in my empire wait a minute when whoa 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 when did i go to minus 146 billion dollars when what what the frick was that from the eu vote that i just did what the hell china steps up some no 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 we are the only belt and road that needs to happen here thank you as we are going to continuously invest in poland yes poland something the scandinavians have never tried to screw over wait why did i go even further to what 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 what, what, is, what is causing me to continuously drop further into debt why am i doing this my treasury is going up but what event is popping up that is continuously doing this that's a call to arms from montenegro montenegro what, what is what 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 are, you, what are you what are you doing down here? Who are you at war with? Why are you at war with Brazil? Why are you trying to puppet Brazil? Ah, well, oh whoa, hey, 
there we go. Would you look at that? UK, you left the EU, but uh, welcome back to the North Sea Empire. <laughs> and all of this, all of this done in literally just six years. No, seven years. Seven years, I mean, because it started January 1st, uh, 2017. Yeah, we managed to form the North Sea Empire and take over all of the North here as Denmark in just seven years. No cheats, no nothing. Like, hell, I'm even gonna pull up this. Like, not a, not a single thing was put in here. No, like, I, had, I didn't have to fix a, a damn thing. No, just, just pure Danish power. That's it. We now have a whopping almost 80 civilian factories. On top of that, we have a burgeoning military industry with 39 mills that we would be able to use here in the scenario. In comparison, Germany over here is 73 and 18, which is insane. If I wanted to now at this point, hey, uh, Poland, just gonna boost up my relations here a little bit, maybe manipulate your politics a little bit, go up here. And I don't like that you're a nationalist in the EU. That's creating a little bit of problems here for me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try to coup you real quick. Thank you very much. Yeah, that works. Poland is now back into Western Outlook instead of nationalist. And that means... Oh, well, I wanted to puppet you, but actually I can't because you are somehow still at war with brazil which no one has been able to invade mm. oh that's annoying hey now we can become president yes beautiful yep it's a good thing we can just continuously exploit china now here with all of our spare political power and uh <clears throat> rapidly boost up our industry and montenegro do you really want me to call to arms hmm 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 scandinavian brazil now how does that sound Let's do it. Yeah, this is, uh, this is about to go pretty fast. Yeah. Indonesia declared war on Australia. Wait a minute. What? <laughs> what? What is going on down here? Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't even need any generals. Just, just, oh, completely overwhelm everything with Brazil. There's gonna be no stopping this here at this point. These are the creators of Ozempic. Oh my God, we're, we're gonna do this. We're gonna completely flood the world as we completely flood Brazil. Oh God, they're really getting destroyed by everybody. Oh, okay, there we go. And I... I barely got any of that, actually. But, you know, I, I think that I deserve a little bit of coast. Don't you think? Yes. There we go. You know, just just, just, just a little bit of land for Denmark's troubles. Really no big deal <laughs> at all. The North Sea Empire expands into the Atlantic. But either way, with that done, that means, hey, uh, Poland, you can become my puppet now. Thank you. And Germany, let's spread a little influence on you here. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Look how happy you are to now be a puppet. Oh, my God. I get really again again you literally just got puppet why are you suddenly back what did you do well either way I don't think there's anything of this that I have to worry about now um EU policies maybe yeah I think this is all that we could pretty much do is really try and focus down no we got to get the full fiscal union accepted now and the only way that we can do that is by getting a majority of the population to agree means I need to actually go and try and get uh, more of the states that refuse integrate as they'll actually help me. Next up that we're going to go ahead and do on here is adopt the EU law, which I think is something that we had to probably do here from the very beginning. And with this instrument for pre-ascension assistance, I don't know what it is that that means for us to do. And now France is a puppet as well. Oh, look, and it's Macron, my puppet. Thank you. I now have France, Germany, and Poland as my puppets of the North Sea Empire. Oh, there goes North Korea declaring war on South Korea. Okay, nothing is happening at all yet. Like, it's been another full year. I, I should have been able to actually do things, but we're not getting any events to actually propose anything. I'm not getting the fiscal union option anymore. I... I, 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 it's, it literally doesn't appear. I don't know if this means that it's bugged or anything. And if I just spent the last like five hours trying to show the super overpowered thing that you can do. And then from this, unite the EU. And then Millennium Dawn had to be Millennium Dawn. From a, what, 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 what do you mean? From a total of zero member states with yes voted zero members. They represent 0% of the EU population and no vote. What? What did no? How did no one vote? What do you mean no one voted? Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> the EU is actually busted. <laughs> I broke the game. I broke the game so that no one will vote in Parliament. Are you kidding me? <sighs> oh, yeah, it's it's not going to work. It's our, well, you know what? You know what? It doesn't matter. I did it. I showed how Denmark can recreate its empire and create the North Sea Empire that easily. We puppeted Poland, Germany, and France, and we just have a continuous supply of money from which we can just puppet everything else if we wanted. I wanted to do a thing where I completely take over the EU and then launch a great viking war to conquer the world but i won't let me do that now will it so as housing prices collapse all around me i think i'm gonna go ahead and end things here today my friends thank you all very much for joining me this has been
has been Staqui with another Hearts of Iron 4 Millennium Dawn playthrough. To you, the nameless boy who came in to thank me in a bar in Copenhagen, I'd say no, thank you. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for watching my content. Thank you all for anyone who likes my videos, who does all these things. I appreciate it because it makes it worthwhile for me to actually make these things in the first place. Thank you, my friends. I'll see you next time. And hopefully, maybe, the EU will be fixed. No, it won't. Gabby just said it won't. No.